church members, we please praise the name of the Lord. We are celebrating the grace of God upon Pastor Anne. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us just give God a shout to you. A shout to the mighty power of God. In the name of Jesus. Hey, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are closer to somebody who is not celebrating, there are so many sins there. Eh? You just migrate and uh, seek something. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to celebrate Jesus because of his grace upon Pastor Anne. Let us give a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Amen. 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 God is good. And all the time. One is us uh, I want to appreciate God for the gift of life and for enabling us to once more meet as saints in the house of the Lord. We cannot take it for granted and we really want to appreciate the Lord. We want to thank God for the same journey masses for our guests from different parts of this nation. We have to be to our to be here to coffee, to to Um, I want to appreciate you so much for accepting on behalf of Pastor Khan, I know she will speak, but I want to appreciate you so much for accepting to be part of this team and for your contributions and for your moral support, the ideas you gave to us in this function. Uh, may God bless you so much. Uh, we are following the protocols of COVID-19, that's why we will not allow maybe a microphone to come to you for you to tell us something. But we want to appreciate you so much and I know that this is a seed you planted and it will surely grow into a bigger tree. Let us just appreciate them with a clap of praise in Jesus' name. And on their behalf, maybe I'll allow Sister Laura, who has been our treasurer and secretary, just to speak a word uh, on behalf of the committee in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah, on behalf of the committee, I'd like to thank all of you for your giving, for your time, everything that you put in to make this day a success. God truly, truly bless you. Uh, our dad, Pastor Alex, Mr. Nitya, Mr. Wilkista, um, all of us who are here, Sister Lydia, Brother Austin, Pastor Christine, I cannot forget you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving your time and your all for this place to be a success. What you sow is what you win. Really, Yeah, so it's good for us to hold our brother's hands for us to go to the next level. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. We also appreciate our secretary, Sister She has been done a wonderful job. Sister. Now we have our country of Fupi and you are Pastor Christian and we have our committee. Na Laura was a Muslim when you have a committee, but I want to just honor her, just say a word. Uh, as a member, yes, but she is also a pastor of this house, and I want to acknowledge her presence in Jesus' name. Karibusa. Well, Mr. Sidney, Amen. Well, Mr. Sidney, Amen. Thank you for your support. Bishop Wetu, Pastor Alex, Kukubali, Sherehe kama hii majike siku ya leo katika nyumba hii. Na kwa sababu Bwana alimuita na Bwana akamtia upendo ndani mwake. Na huo upendo ukasambaa na tukapata mtoto wetu Mama Anne ambaye ameandika kitabu kinaitwa Story ya Anne. Kitabu ambacho kinasema historia yake. Hallelujah. Na naamini kwamba hii historia ya Anne ukisoma utaipicture like Pastor Anne. This woman like was like Pastor Anne. And when you read this book, you will see the sweetness in this lady called Anne. She was a wonderful woman, a noble woman, a woman that will never give up when things are not okay. She will never give up. This is the woman we are talking about. I want to appreciate all of us that have come. Guests of honor, 
all guests that are inside the house, we appreciate your coming. We say thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Feel at home. My name is Pastor Christian. Thank God for that. I mean, I appreciate Pastor Christian in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, without waste of time, without going into much, I want us to stand up on our feet. At this time, as uh, I bring the man of God, our overseer of this ministry, to just give us an address before we proceed in Jesus' name. Let us stand up on our feet in Jesus' name. Let us put our hands together as we welcome our overseer. received through the multiplication of the grace and the peace of God to us that this causes us to do all things that pertains life and godliness so that means for those who believe we can be able to do all things and there is no end to the revelation in the scriptures it's just that we have not waited upon the Lord much even one scripture, we can write two books, three books. Amen? And that is why today, the story of Hannah, Elkanah, and Eli is a revelation that Pastor Anne received, and she has documented it. Now, it is just a story, a, a small story in the Bible, but this one carries a revelation for our consumption today. Amen? I know if he, was, he did receive that revelation. Today, we will be somehow in between some things. What did God mean by this? What did Jesus mean by this? And Apostle Paul and the other apostles, they open up the scripture and bring the relevance of that word into our days. And we are able to read the epistles and be able to link it with the word of the New Testament and then the Old Testament and really understand the word of God. But that did not stop by the, only the apostles. This work still continues. And in our church, we were saying that the apostles in heaven are waiting for the completion of the work because they didn't finish it. Praise the Lord. And God is looking upon this generation because I believe we are the last generation that whatever God has promised the church that must be accomplished, must be accomplished in our generation and we cannot afford not to finish the race and finish with victory and I believe through such medium and the books that are written by servants of God a lot of knowledge is disseminated into people sometimes I read books of even men of God who have got to be with the Lord and those books have revelation and great revelation that opens our understanding and I believe this book has that revelation to open our understanding and has a lot of relevance 
to the church and to the body of Christ concerning Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is why I'm so happy. By the way, it's the first book we are launching in our church. So it's a great honor. Amen. It's a great honor. And you know what? It has made you to come here. Maybe you never have got a chance to know where Holy Gate of Heaven Church is. But today, God has ordered your steps to know where Holy Gate of Heaven Church is and to know that there are some brethren in Bungoma who meet at a church called Holy Gate of Heaven. So you see, all this, apart from the launching of the book, it has a lot of benefits in the spiritual realm. Do you agree with me? Yeah. There's somebody who will just be inspired that if Pastor Ann can do a book, I can do even more. <laughs> you can, yes. One of the important things that I have learned and I continue to learn is the fellowship of brethren. This work, this book has worked through the fellowship. The meeting of together of people, the publisher, the brothers in the church, the, those ones who have been helping from Nairobi, that comes through the fellowship. Brethren, people of God who are here, learn to have good fellowship with your brethren. And I want to appreciate the committee through Sister Laura, the group that was formed to help this work to come to this day. May the Lord God bless you so much for that great work. <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord God bless you so much. There is nothing that pleases God more than a brother or sister who gives his life as a sacrifice for the sake of the benefit of somebody else. I just want, as I finish, you stand again in honor and celebration to just help me celebrate Pastor Anne and celebrate the goodness of God in her life. In Jesus' name, just give her a hand clap, a clap of freak for her. God bless you so much for this great work. In Jesus' name. And let all of us say amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, at this time, I wish we never sat. But uh, at this time, we want to. There's a song we need supposed to sing. We are a chosen generation. Call for the show is excellence. All I require. All I require for life. God has given me. We can stand up for the show is excellent. Let us stand up. All I require for life, God has given me. And I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What, what he says I am. When he says I'm not, I know who I am.
we are talking about the story of Hannah and Hannah, and um, Hannah, and Hannah means favored. Yeah, you know when you were singing that song, I was looking at the way you were singing. Some of us who are singing it is like we don't understand it. Amen. Amen. But me as Hannah, I'm favored, and this favor <laughs> is what has brought me to be where I am today. Amen. If it was not the favor of the Lord, amen, that also gave me favor in the house, I wouldn't be here today. Jina la bwana And I'm so favored that you came. Don't you see? So now that you're favored, I'm going to make you a favor. I'm going to make you a favor. Uka toka tu nyumbani, uka acha shuguli zako, uka kuja. Kushangilia mungu na kushukuru mungu kwa moja na ami. Ebu jibigie makofi. Hallelujah. Mwadada zangu ningependa wasimame Melistas Perin Amen I'm so blessed to have you Kwa nasikuwe sana Amen Yes, Bishop Karibu Asante sana I'm also blessed to have uh, Pastor Mrs. Grace just stand and wave. Amen. From Bungoma City. I'm blessed to have uh, Dr. Reverend Stephen Opanga with us. All the way from Kakamega. Can we put our hands together? That man of God has made me to be in the history of this nation when it comes to psychology. That man you are seeing there. Nataka ku, kusema jambo ya kwamba katika hiki kitabu Hiki kitabu kinaeza onekana kidogo Lakini vile nimekuwa nikikeandika Kila wakati na hiyo ilileta sintofahamu kidogo na publisher Likuwa na niambia Every time you are reviewing the book you are adding there like 4,000 words Now what is that? I don't want you to add I, I only want you to do the grammar uh, uh, Spellings and grammar. Start to wonge zaya pokuito. Like ni kila wakati ni lukua ni na ni na jaribu kurekebisha. Ofuno una una chipuka tu una chipuka. I'm sure lecturers will be reading Bishop Musale. You realize it's not the original. There is a lot of modification. And ni na amini yakwamba that will happen to you. Wana sikuwe sana. In a nutshell, I have highlighted that the ways of God are higher than our ways, and it is only when we dare follow the way of God. Outside the box of our imagination, we will see the hand of God being revealed. Psalms 107 should be verse 20 says that those men that launch in the deep, they go to the great waters. God commands us storm to come. The sea rages. They cry and call upon the name of the Lord. And the Lord hears their distress and saves them. Those that launch in the deep, see the mighty hand of God. So until you launch into the deep and you are ready, you know, for the surprises of uncertainty in God, then you will not discover the ways of God. Amen? Number two issue that I address in this book is, is the prayer that yields. You know, we are living in a generation of targets. We have targets in our NGOs. We also have targeted prayer. If the church of Jesus Christ can understand what is it that I can do to make sure that every time I pray, according to 1 John chapter 5, from verse 14 and 15, the confidence that we have that when we pray in the will of God, God always hears us, and God always, always. Let me just give you a kunum, Matthew 16, 17, the Rema word. Learning to tune your spirit into the web level, web level of the spirit. Amen. Like last year, I was in the church, I was fellowshipping in Budalangi. And God says, God told me to go to Holy Gate of Heaven for a Sunday service. And you know I was broke. And I said, Nitoke Budalangi na kuja ngoma Sunday service. Nasijalikwa. But the Spirit of God impressed on my heart that I come to Holy Gate. Now, these are the results of hearing from God. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And if you can learn how to hear heaven and tune your spirit to 24-7, 
hearing from Heaven FM, I'm telling you, you have targeted prayer that always yields results. Then I also talk about uh, vows. Vows make you a partner with God, and God is not a liar. Then I have talked shortly about uh, 300 words on the art of silence, which the church seems to be forgetting. The art of silence. Ecclesiastes 3, 7. And Job, I think, I can't remember the chapter, but around chapter 40, is it 40? I don't know. Job in Africa, somewhere. Buko nyuma nyuma. The art of silence. Iyo utasoma kwa kitabu. Alafu kitu, kuna kitu hapa ambacho ningependa ika kusisimue. When you know how to pray in the will of God, you will always receive answered prayer. What did answered prayer do to Hannah? Number one, revival. The church is not revived because most of the time our prayers are not answered. Amen? When your prayers are answered like Hannah, oh, you will lift up your head. Hannah says, my mouth is enlarged. And then he says, you who are proud. And to add on it, she prophesies about the Messiah. It revives the spiritual gifts that grief, rejection, pain, and whatever the enemy would have put in your life had covered up your wellspring of life that the Lord has put in your heart. Answered prayer will remove all those hindrances and you will be revived. Number two big issue for answered prayer, the boldness for evangelism. Eh? If you are having an issue with evangelism, go back to your prayer. Amen? Look at the Samaritan woman. Where does she get the boldness? She had gone to the river at midday when women are in their houses making lunch. But look at when Jesus meets her and she realizes it's the Messiah. She goes and tells them, come and see a man. Sio mteja wangu, huyu ni tofauti. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen? Jina la bwana libarikiwe. Amen. Answered prayer will give you the boldness to testify and to evangelize and bring people to the kingdom and, and depopulate the kingdom of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I finish my book by saying like this, Hebrews 11:40, on the last page. The Bible says that the heroes of faith, they were never perfected. Papa re re repeated it yesterday, I think, and today, I'm not so sure, kama amerudia leo. And I want to challenge you, my sister, and my brother seated here. Go and read that Hebrews 11 verse 40 properly. Ikuingie. Ya mwamba Abraham hakukua perfected kwa sababu yako. Mimi ni meanza story ya Hana. Amen? And in it, inside Hana, the way Pastor Christian, eh mungu adukupati of no, by the way. Inside that story of Hana, my story as Anna is also weaved inside it. One as if you were son. But what is your story? What is your story? The Lord is waiting, and this generation is waiting for you. Amen. Amen. So I want to have the honor of uh, inviting mom just to say hi, my, my mentor mother, all the way from Eldoret. Hallelujah. Uh, my name is Pastor Margaret Nyambane. I come from Eldoret. I am, I mean, I think I have mixed feelings as, as I look at my daughter. I met her way back in the year 2014 in a conference somewhere in Luanda. And since that time, the Lord connected us. I have worked with Anne. And if you don't know her story, you can ask me. Praise God. She has walked a rough path. And in the midst of it all, I used to tell her the, the, the fire that refines coal is not cold. It is hot. So 
she has walked through it all. There are those times she's called me crying, and I tell her, you are more than a conqueror. I tell her, you have to push, you have to forge ahead, you have to make it, my daughter. Today, I've sat there and I looked at her. I could not control myself. I found myself crying. I have cried for, for two reasons. When I, I remember the, the tears, she has cried. Then I see the victory. I just told God, you are God. Glory to God. I'm so proud of this girl. Uh, in 2015, I launched my first book. I've written a book. Uh, she knows about it, Women of Honor. And uh, as I was launching that book in the year 2015, December, she was there and she slept in my house. And uh, she was looking at me and like this, Mama. But from that time of launching my first book, my life in my work with God did not remain the same. And I want to prophesy to this God that you are your new life is beginning today. The Lord is turning a new leaf. A new chapter of your life begins today. I have sat there and told God, with the launch of this book, your tears are wiped. You enter into a new level of victory. And let me, let, me, let me talk to the man of God. Thank you for receiving this girl. The time she needed somewhere a shelter. But when her time for launching out into where God wants her to go, bless her and let her go. Praise God. And I want to congratulate you for this beautiful sanctuary. The last time I was here, I have been here before. I was here when, uh, I don't know whether she's in the house, Sister Doris was launching her first album. And uh, I didn't find this. I found a, a small structure. This is awesome. The Lord has done a great job. This is beautiful. Man of God, may God bless you. Shine in Bungoma and let souls begin to flow into the kingdom of God from this place. May many people get out of here to preach the gospel in the nations of Africa and the world. Glory, glory, glory to God. So I, I want to just end by saying this woman you are seeing here, maybe you don't know her, but she, she's carrying gems. She's a jewel. She's carrying great things. She's carrying greatness in her. And anybody who is great must be pricked, elbowed, and kicked. And I know it because I've been through it. And I know she's carrying greatness because Greatness provokes the enemy's camp. And they will want to tell you how useless you are. I am sure somebody may have at one time spoken something that looked like a, a sandballot. But those are things we, we experience. So if somebody told you, Leo anajua ya kwamba hii ni ukuta wa Yerusalemu na hawezi angushwa na mwea. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I love you and let me let me not speak because nimeanza kusikia ni kama kwamba ninaweza kulipuka na ni wakati sio wakati wangu wa kulipuka. Congratulations my baby. Thank you. The last my house was the last place she came when she was almost giving up, I think like a month ago. And she was like, Ooh. I told her the launch of that book is what is going to be a stepping stone for your next level. Go launch that book. 
Praise God. So I know today she has been launched into her next level in the ministry, regardless of the obstacles and the pains and every other story that I know and maybe you don't know. God bless you, baby. As we reach the climax, what is your story? What is your story? The world is waiting. Amen? Mpaka wakati utakuwa na ujasiri wa kuweka hiyo miguu yako ndani ya maji ya Jordan ndio Mungu atakausha na utaona kile ambacho umekuwa ukitamani na kuota Mungu aki unveil Bwana Yesu asifiwe she has just said that we are coming to the climax of our ceremony today kwa hivyo ningependa tusimame kwa miguu yako katika jina la Yesu Kristo Father we bless your name we indeed today are gathered here to celebrate your goodness upon our lives. Thank you, Lord, because this is just the beginning of great things that you have planned concerning our lives. And according to your word, Lord, the Bible says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered the heart of man the things that you have in store for them who love you. We know that greatness will be our portion according to your word. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are able to do this through your servant arm. And Lord, we know that great are the things that you are going to do even concerning her life and to the rest of us to your own glory. We give you praise for this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we want to welcome the servant of God who is going to uh, maybe declare the word and dedicate it. But I want you to help me welcome the overseer of this ministry who is going to bring us the servant of God, Bishop, who will declare the book and dedicate it in Jesus' name. Let us put our hands together. I have never seen your eyes. Amen. Without wasting any more time, because I had my chance to dance my dance, and it's not my time to dance my dance at all, but to welcome the man of God, Bishop Musale. So help me in Jesus' name to welcome the servant of God who is coming to launch the book in Jesus' name. Welcome, Bishop. Let me shake your hand. God bless you and thank you for coming. We honor your daddy. Amen. Go ahead, sir. God bless you. It's a pleasure to be part of this celebration this afternoon. And uh, it's actually an honor to me and my dear wife, Emily, to, to come and dedicate this book that has been written by our dear friend Anne. I may just take a short while to talk about the book, but before that, I'd like to welcome my dear wife, Emily. Come and say hello to you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the overseer, bishops who are here, pastors, and other brethren, our friend Anne, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Uh, it's a great privilege uh, for me to be here and uh, just accompanying my husband for this great day where we are launching Anne's book. Uh, my name is Emily Musale. I'm a pastor with Christ Victor Gospel Ministries where he is the overseer, pastoring one of the churches. Uh, we've been accompanied by our second born grandson out of three and uh, we really love God. So we are here just to tell Anne, congratulations for the good work. May the Lord bless you so much. Otherwise, I'm also a high school principal at uh, Merrill Street Secondary School, Equian Sub County. You are most welcome. 
God bless you so much. Uh, in 1990, I think uh, I was uh, a teacher at uh, the now called St. Cecilia Girls High School, and uh, I had a big house. Uh, it was actually a bungalow uh, in the school compound, so it was a staff house. And we started the fellowship, a home group for believers. We had uh, Bible studies, a Bible study on Tuesdays and uh, prayers on Thursday. Uh, Reverend Dr. Agnes Haemba, who's just left, was part of the fellowship. And she brought with her uh, sister Anne, who was a little girl at that time. And uh, of course, uh, through the home group, we, we read books, we prayed, and we had worship. That, has, that really helped us grow up spiritually. And the time came when Anne had to leave and go to Vihiga in her marriage. And just recently, you know, we reconnected, you know, by the grace of God. She told me about this book and what she's been doing, and it was awesome. And I really encouraged her, my wife encouraged her. And so it's good that we are here to see the fruit of her labor. I'll talk about reading culture. Uh, you're never too old to read. Anyone can read if he wants. But the problem we have in Africa is that we lack reading culture. Sadly, this has led to dysfunctional literacy, which has robbed us the wealth of knowledge that we deserve to possess. There are few benefits that are noticeable in reading culture. I'll just mention three in a nutshell. The first benefit is increase in memory. Reading slows down the rate of memory deterioration, but instead enhances memory. The brain function is heightened and makes one smarter and intelligent. The second benefit is creativity and skills. Reading can make one thing creative. The reader will have good creative thinking skills, which lead to a better performance in academics. The third benefit is increase in knowledge. You see, Francis Bacon said, knowledge is power. And indeed, the more you read, the more informed you become. And the more knowledge you gain, the more powerful you become. I tell many pastors in the seminars that I'm invited to, to speak, and I tell them, pastors, just, just read, just read, just read. I've traveled widely. And in many countries I've been to, and especially the overseas countries, it's like they just love me because I have a wealth of knowledge. I read economics, I read science, I read politics. I read everything. And so I fit everywhere I go to. And they invite me not only to preach, but just to speak. And they'll say, our guest speaker this lunch on will be Bishop Michael from Kenya. And they'll speak about this. And I speak because I read. The fourth benefit is mental stimulation. Your brain requires exercise to keep it strong and healthy, just like muscles in your body. So reading gives the brain that exercise. Fifthly, stress relief. When you read, you distance yourself from the stress of everyday life, putting your mind and body at ease. And lastly, vocabulary expansion. The more you read, the more words you are exposed to. And so reading increases your word power and fresh expression. Reading is an art not to be taken for granted, but to be embraced by all in order to enhance 
development. One important thing we need to know is that for one to author a book, he or she must have reading culture. Anne has authored this book titled The Story of Hannah Elkanah. And this is enough proof that she has reading culture. Recently, a friend of mine who is an author of his second book, The Blessing Effect, asked me to, to go through the book before he could have it published. And as I went through the book, I advised him, I told him, could you, if you like, could you, could you change the title of this book? The title is How Blessing is Changing the World. But could, could you have it as the blessing effect? How blessing is changing the world? He embraced my idea. And he said, Bishop Michael, could you also write a foreword for this book? And I said, of course, yes, I'm, I'm happy to do that. And so I wrote a foreword alongside Pastor Jeff Wickland of New Zealand and Pastor Vivian Anson of New Zealand and Pastor Sa Sarwar Mahsil of Pakistan. Today the book is in print and it's being distributed all over the world. Unfortunately, I only have three copies of this book, but I'm soon going to print thousands and thousands of this book here in Kenya and have it distributed. But I have the pleasure to just give to uh, the overseer, <laughs> Pastor Alex, please. And of course, the author of the story of Hannah. And your spiritual mentor and mom, Pastor Mark. I'd like to congratulate Anne for adding into our libraries and bookstores another book and creating space for us to read more and gain more knowledge. Congratulations. You'll agree with me that Anne has posed a challenge to us by writing this book, which I'll briefly talk about. Pastor Anne, the author of this book titled The Story of Anna Elkanah, has dared to write a treatise that revolves around love, shame, and abuse. Hannah, the key player in the story, is faced with this appealing yet confronting situation and overcomes it through faith and prayer. The book reveals circuitous responses towards Hannah's situation by other characters in the story, namely Elkanah, Penina, and Eli. Elkanah, Hannah's husband, has a choice of interceding for Hannah, who is barren, or marrying a second wife to bear him children. He chooses the latter and marries Benina, who bears him four children. The author displays this irony of events as we see Elkanah giving Hannah two portions of meat to demonstrate his love for her, while Penina is given one portion each time Elkanah comes to give sacrifice. It is interesting to see how love language may be misplaced and bring frustration at times. Hannah's love language was not the receiving of gifts. It would probably be words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, or physical touch. The author also reveals how Elkanah's love for Hannah brings emotional pain to Penina, who vents her anger on Hannah. A person nursing emotional pain can cause offense, and Penina has that pain even though she has children. Her constant abuse on Hannah is not at all addressed by Elkanah. 
even though he asserts that Hannah is worth more than 10 sons. I'm especially thrilled by the revelation that Penina perpetrates verbal abuse on Hannah, causing trauma on her. In this book, the author states that many traumatic cases draw focus on the survivor, yet the perpetrator needs help as well. Penina seems to be calling attention from Elkanah. The feeling of neglect by her husband makes Penina put up a defense. Displacement is a defense mechanism in which the person exposed to pain chooses a person or object that is less threatening than the offender. And in this case, Elkanah is the offender, Penina is the offended, and Hannah is the less threatening than Elkanah. Eli the priest misunderstands Hannah and tells her not to drink too much wine. Hannah is not drunk but pouring out her heart to God in intercession, yet Eli the priest thinks she's drunk. The author at this point explores how priests and prophets may fall victims of many wrong judgments. This happens when we lose spiritual sensitivity to the heavenly frequency and make judgments according to their own understanding and not according to God's perspective. And so the author talks about how priests of old could hear God's voice when the Spirit was upon them and they would prophesy. They could tell the situation of a person when they were in that state. The challenge we face today is that people want to be told about their situation by pastors and, and prophets and apostles when God is silent. And this may lead to the temptation of fake prophecies by God's servants for fear of being thought to be unspiritual. The author portrays Hannah as a religious heroine who overcomes all odds to accomplish God's divine purpose, the bringing forth of Israel's prophet and deliverer. She scorns the shame of barrenness through intensive prayer and intercession against the backdrop of false love, abuse, and wrongful judgment. Her vow to God to serve him, sorry, her vow to God was genuine. That if she bore a son, she would give him back to God to serve him. Hannah's prayer of faith moves the mountain in her life, which is barrenness, and allows God to work the miracle of turning ashes into beauty. The author conclusively encourages Christians to have faith in God in times of affliction and prayer. The power of prayer will bring about transformation as we witness the story of Anna Elkanah. I can vouch for this book and encourage every Christian to read it, not just once, but numerous times. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. You are a great inspiration to the body of Christ. And I join the other speakers who have spoken before me and say, this is just the beginning of the great work God wants to accomplish through your ministry. I want us to stand up, have some time of worship, and then I'll invite a few people Overseer, Pastor Alex, Margaret, Pastor Christine, and Eric. And Apostle, you're a partner with Pastor Margaret in Eldon. Tarubo is just a stone's throw from Eldon. We're going to dedicate this book and declare open.
can we have a moment of worship? Just pray, pray for Anne, pray for her ministry, her, her authorship ministry, pray for the book, pray for the committee that oversaw the publication of this book. Let's just have some time of worship. that you're doing in the life of Anne. 
in our ministry, in our vision. We are here to declare that you are God and besides you there is none like you. Jesus, your great and awesome, seated on the throne, majestic in holiness and awesome in glory. We declare there is none like you. Yes, Lord. Your own son. Yes, we love you. Yes, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. May, I ask, may I ask the servants of God that I mentioned, and I forgot to mention Bishop from Butere. Please, Bishop. From, you've come all the way from Butere. Yeah. I've come all the way from Tarubo to the, to the holy gate of heaven. So I'm just about to get to heaven. Apostle, please, and Margaret, can we, can we just lay our hands, can we lay our hands on this, this bunch of books and speak prophetically as the Spirit of the Lord leads you? Lord, I release the anointing upon this book, the power of the Holy Spirit upon this book. I release the favor of God upon this book. And the Father, this book shall be a great inspiration in the lives of people, in the souls of people. It will bring life transformation, revive, healing, and deliverance in, in people, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we lay our hands on this book, the story of Hannah Elkanah authored by Pastor Ann. We dedicate this book to you, Father, and pray for the sanctification of this book. Release your spirit upon this book. The people will read and it will be a blessing to their hearts. We pray that, Father, as people open this book to read, their lives will be transformed. They'll receive healing in their hearts. They'll receive revival in their hearts, in their families, in their churches, in their ministries. And our Father, we pray that this book will not only be distributed in this country, but in many other countries. And our Father, your favor will be upon this book. We pray blessing this book in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we want to pray for Sister Anne, Pastor Anne. Lord bless her dreams. And Lord bless her vision. Enlarge her territories, Father. This is just the beginning of the great and awesome work you want to accomplish through her. So Lord bless her life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, the last phase of this event is to open this package and declare this book open for sale. Sister. And now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, I take this privilege of opening this bunch of books. And I declare this book titled 
the story of Hannah Elkanah opened for sale, not only in Kenya, but all over the world, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Congratulations, Anna. Congratulations. Congratulations. And congratulations, all of you pastors, servants of God, and the church as a whole. God bless you. Church, here you go. Hallelujah. And it's 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 a shame that I'm not going out this year. But if the Lord opens doors for me to go out, I'll go with these books. And the people out there will know Hallelujah. there is Pastor Anne in Kenya Amen. who can write books. Amen. God bless you. How like yeah. how much is how much is a copy? Five hundred. Okay, I'll take ten. Emily, I'll take ten. I'll take ten for my leaders. I'm taking ten for my leaders. So so who is telling? Is it Eric or Christine? Pastor Christine. Yeah, Pastor Christine, are you the one selling the book? Give me ten, give me ten. Give me ten. <laughs> Pastor Christine, can you receive ten for our leaders, please? And you're free, you're free now to come and buy this and take, take your charges. Pastor Alex is also taking 10 for his leaders. Can we give Jesus a hand clap? You're free. You're free now to come. You can get a copy. You can get two copies, a couple of copies. Just feel free and buy this book. I'd like to say that this is a great moment and a great privilege just to be here. My name is uh, Stephen Opanga. I come from Kakamega and I've worked with Anne, especially in the church and in, in the field of counseling psychology for quite a long time. But today, I had been invited to two meetings had been invited to a meeting of some friends from Ghana with whom we are planning to have meetings of crusade and winning souls in Kakamega. And then Sister Anne had also invited me here and I chose to come here. I want to tell you that, you know, sometimes we don't understand what is happening. But this is what I call the gospel of multiplication. You know, when Peter stood in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and shared, and 3,000 people were added to their number, that is perhaps one of the greatest crusades that has ever been there. But that was the gospel of addition. Because shortly after that, a lot of persecution and division followed. But there is one man by the name of Philip whom the Holy Ghost met on the road and spoke to him and told him, go down and meet somebody. Do you know, out of that one man, the gospel reached Africa. The gospel of multiplication sometimes does not go with big numbers. And it is because men and women take the authority and take time, sleepless night, to put it on paper 
that multiplication begins. This year is a year of multiplied grace. And this is one of the high points of this year that I'm seeing. I came from Kakamega with three books for Sister Anne. I normally do distribution of Derek Prince materials. So I carried three books. Maybe I'll just hand them to her. Now, I was going to hand over privately, but because Bishop gave me a microphone, I thought I should hand over this now. <laughs> One of the books is talking about the pages from my life's book. This is talking about the story of Derek Prince, but majorly about the gospel. And the other book, also by Derek Prince, is talking about the power of the sacrifice. He has given seven major keys of what the power of the blood of Jesus does to our lives. And the third book is, I'm happy that she said she has quoted Hebrews. This is from Michael Eaton, he's a friend of mine, he's a missionary to Kenya, and he's, he's written a, a, an expository on the, on the preaching through the Bible from the book of Hebrews. So I just want to say to Anne that uh, in this work, I've written that here, may this mark the beginning of greater work and open doors to the nations as you follow your destiny to the fullest. Thank you. Let's put our hands together and appreciate uh, uh, this man of God. And Pastor Christian, I can't see Eric, who was the MC. So can you take over as the MC? <laughs> and now clap your hands as I welcome my overseer to come and pray. Before Papa prays, we have lunch. In a same hivi, kwamba tunachakula. Unapo, papa kimaliza kuomba, utaka tumale pale, kuna mtu atakuelekeza male tunaenda. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate ma'am. Amen. Before I pray, I want to give a vote of thanks to all of you who have again managed to be here and to stay up to the last minute of the launch of this book. More so, I want to thank our bishop, uh, Bishop Musale. Indeed, he's a very wonderful and friendly man. I will want to hang around him, and I just love the ambience that surrounds him. And all the men of God, the mama, Karibu Tena, and uh, God willing, I will want to see you again coming to bless us as a mother and bless your daughters this side. This is godly connection, and we thank God for that. All men and women of God who have been uh, taking their chance and their time to be with us today, we are not taking that uh, for granted. We say, Asante Sana for coming for the sake of one. Praise the name of Jesus. This is the love of Christ, indeed. This is the true love of Christ. Nobody has come here because of his interest, but for the interest of our dear sister Anne. And we thank God for you. And may the Lord also cause many to come when you need them in your own event. Praise the Lord. So now, I want to thank the organizers in Holygate, those who have worked tirelessly uh, to ensure that this day is a success. God bless you so, so much through the, uh, the committee, Sister Laura, Pastor Eric. God bless you so much. The praise and worship, thank you for gracing the event. Indeed, you have made us proud again in Jesus' name. Members of Holygate who have been here, you have not done anything, but you are just there. That number makes a difference. Hallelujah. That number makes a difference. Asante sana. I don't know whom not to say or not to thank. The crew or the media. Thank you for recording. I'm very sure this is going to remain as Kumbu Kumbu when uh, Pastor Anne will be watching her first book. Of course, as uh, the woman of God has said, she may do more in the future. God will continue to give you a revelation. You know, when you do something and you realize it's sweet, you'll go back and do it again. I have really learned a lot through the bishop that uh, what reading does. I read, but I see the motivation, the way you have motivated me to read. So I'm going to read more and read and read so that I remain young just like you. So at this juncture, I want to thank God that the event has gone on very well and is success. And uh, I just want us to stand on our feet and say a prayer. And then after that, we'll settle down. I believe we'll bless the meal also. 
through the same prayer, then will be done in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Indeed, Father, thank you for making this day a success. We have seen you again. For, oh Lord, it's one thing to plan a thing, and it's another thing, Lord, to bring it to completion. Unless the Lord was on our side, this could not have happened. Many things can come to hinder the destiny and the plan of man. But we thank you that, God, these books have come from Nairobi. They were able to arrive safely. We give you praise, Father. We thank you for all our guests who have traveled from Kakamega, from Kisumu, Lord, from uh, the other side, Kipkaren, Lord, from Lugari. They have come just to witness, Lord, this event. We thank you. We thank you for giving Jan masses. Thank you for the Holy Gate of Heaven members who have attended this session. And more so, Father, we bless your servant, Pastor Anne, for this day and for what, Lord, she has tirelessly done in the secret, but has been revealed, Lord, in the multitude. Blessed be your name. Lord, we sanctify the meal that is before us as we fellowship together through the bitings and the, through the fellowship of the meal. Blessed be your holy name. And make us one as your children with that great love. Let it continue to abound in us until the coming of Jesus Christ. We bless you and we honor you for your good. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed and let everybody say amen. 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 amen.